So this was my initial idea for doing object detection using convolution neural networks. I'll take image of uh, different scales to identify objects of uh, different uh, sizes. And I will also be using the sliding window technique to identify objects at uh, different locations within the image. At each sliding window uh, technique, my initial idea was to take the crop of the image and then feed it as input to my convolution neural network. And why did I have to take the crops and not feed the entire image as input? Because the CNNs usually accept fixed size input. And that is the reason why I had to take the crops of the image instead of feeding the entire image as input to the neural network. But this constraint, the fixed size, uh, size constraint, was because of the fully connected layer. But by re-implementing the fully connected layers as convolution operation, I removed this restriction. So now I was able to feed the entire image as input to the uh, convolution neural network and combined with the concept of image pyramid, I can get the spatial output that is by using the images of different uh, sizes, different scales, I'll be able to uh, detect different objects of different sizes at different locations. So both my problem, the problem of uh, location and scale are now solved. So this is the intuition behind overfeed. In the overfeed paper, I am avoiding using the sliding window crops by implementing the fully connected layer as convolutions so that, so that there is no input size constraint. And I am getting the spatial output so I am able to use the image pyramid concept. In overfeed, they used image pyramids of 6 different scales. These are the dimensions of uh, those 6 different scales. And they did the convolution. And we can see the spatial output dimensions here. Okay. And uh, they, they use the same AlexNet uh, architecture but modified it slightly so that the receptive field of this network was 245 by 245. So their base scale, the minimum scale of the image that they used was this 245 by 245. So for this scale of the image, you will get just one output. That is you will be able to detect only one object. But at uh, this dimension, if the image is this dimension, you will be able to detect up to six objects. That is the spatial output is of size 2 by 3. And for this dimension, similarly, you will be able to detect up to 15 objects with a spatial output of size 3 by 5. And finally, in the same way, at the maximum dimension, you will get a spatial output of size 7 by 10 and you will be able to detect up to 70 different objects at different locations within the image. For example, this value here, whatever the confidence and the boning box predictions you will get at uh, this position, it will reflect the object that is detected in this red patch. Okay, and this value here will reflect the object that is detected in this yellow patch. Similarly, this value here will be able to detect the object in this blue patch. Probably the bicycle will get detected here and you will get the confidence score and bounding box for the bicycle in this location. But for this person, you may not be able to detect in uh, de uh, these scales, but uh, this person might get, uh, get detected in this scale because here the receptive field of the network perfectly matches this person. That is, the person is correctly enclosed inside this receptive field at this scale. So this way, in overfeed, by using images of these scales and the image pyramid of six different sizes, they are able to detect many images at different locations and of different sizes. And if the scale of the image is big, you will be able to detect smaller objects and as the scale of the image goes on getting big, uh, smaller, you will be able to detect larger objects. So this is the intuition behind overfeed.